Guys around the world, welcome back to another installment, The Adventures of Guy Stuff. I'm here, as always, with my trusty friend, and he's not really a co-host, we're, 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 we are co-hosts. Co-hosts. We're like, John, we're, we're like a married group, we're like, God has made us oh, one. Yeah, no, not so much. No, I mean, not big gay marriage kind of thing, but I mean, like, in the way of, like, you know, God has knitted our hearts It's together. already over, we're already, hey, John, <laughs> you have to... John, you gotta behave because we have a minor on the program. Man, that chap is an actor. Like, he ain't never seen no gay guy before, man. That's like I'm saying, man. It's like it's I mean, already that, coming oh, off man, the tracks. I'm telling you, man. Sorry. Anyway, I, I tried. I'm so sorry, guys. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> all right, so check it out, guys, and you two guys in Germany. Uh, exactly. So we have with us. We we supposedly have listeners in 14 countries. We do. Oh, that's awesome. So we do. There, there, we don't know how many there are in Germany, but we did make this one joke one time about Germany, and I feel like perhaps, you know, they don't listen anymore. I don't yeah, know. maybe not. So, we'll so, see. So, so if you're still <laughs> listening over there in Germany, you know, give us a shout out. Guten Tag. Das <laughs> or, 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 or something, you know. I, I don't know. We <laughs> love to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, hey, dad's acting. Um, so, so now we know where Brayden gets it from. Uh, so, so for my friends who are uh, watching online, uh, let me introduce our two friends to you guys and to my friends who are listening. Of course, you can't see anything. So if we don't tell you what's going on, you just have no idea. Y'all mm -hmm. don't know that John's not wearing a shirt. Mm -hmm. um, so please, or pants. Please, please, sure. Why are we gonna just just draws. That's it, man. Just draws and. But, <laughs> Draws and socks. That's how I roll. We we have this is the first time on, on guy stuff that we've ever had a younger man mm. yeah. on the program. And not he's a man. He's a younger man, but he's a man. Mm. All right. He's a guy. Mm. Uh, but we have with us tonight we have Jason uh and Braden Eaton. Uh you don't know Braden's name yet, maybe, or maybe you do. I don't know. But if you don't, you need to write it down. This mm. is one of those folks you need. You you can say, you know, I remember that time I heard this this guy talking. And, on his dumb podcast. On his dumb <laughs> podcast with these two rejects exactly. who are just doing their community service exactly. hours by doing a podcast. Um, so it's not a thing. I don't know. But um, <laughs> guys, thank you for joining us tonight. Hey, thanks for having us on the show. Yeah, happy to be here. Yeah, we were we're we're stoked. Uh, so check it out. Um, we got to cover a lot of ground tonight because it's really is uh is unique to have uh this dynamic with mm -hmm. a father and a son. Uh, this is our first know, father and son one. Is it is our father? first father and son. First so we, we're going to cover mm -hmm. several things, uh, awesome. not just relating to acting so you guys are in for it but uh kind of kind of take us through a little bit uh just tell us a little bit about what you do Braden, uh, and and then we can kind of go from there just kind of lay it on us let's just give us your elevator speech man dude <laughs> I, I don't know. I just kind of act and stuff. <laughs> no, I know, but some of the things that I do are, well, obviously acting, and that's been a passion ever since I was actually five. And when I was five, I wanted to be an actor, but my dad didn't, wanted to wait to make sure that I wanted to, you know, actually do this because it is a long career path. Because you so know, what I hear you saying is your dad wanted to crush your dreams. <laughs> yeah. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm teasing. I'm teasing. I'm no, sure. but um, he didn't want you to did. end up like Michael Jackson. He didn't want you to end up like Michael Jackson. That's all it was. It's even like <laughs> just all you all hey, your wow, childhood be thrown away. You know, it's, it's, it's good. It's good, Dad. It's good, Dad. Yeah, but he did let me enroll in some music, local musicals like. Uh, Junior Lion King, Junior James and the Giant Peach, and just all stuff that was produ produced locally through my school. And it was just, I had so much fun doing that. And I just, yeah. and it also helped build up my acting skill. And well, I don't really dance, but it kind of helped build up my dance. Mm -hmm. Dancing. You, you know how to dance. Yeah, a little bit. You do <laughs> some hip hop. There you go. My, my nice kids, up. I got a 16 year old. <laughs> And a thirteen-year-old, 
that uh, we we just signed up for dance. What like on the last month or whatever, and they love it, man. They like we just lost that fundamental Baptist. Listen. I know, man. Like, yeah, I mean, this is not even like like you know <laughs> you know long skirt wearing dancing. This is like you know K pop dancing and stuff. They do. I'm like, oh man, that's kind of cool. And I'm like. And I'm like, wait, and then because it's in Thai, and so they don't really understand English. So some of the songs they picking for my kids to be dancing to, I'm like, I'm like, no, nah, man, we 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 got we got to change some of that. <laughs> so, so yeah, so that's cool. <laughs> anyway. So the dancing thing, man, that yeah, that's pretty cool. My my boy loves it. My boy loves it. Mm-hmm. So Lion King, did you yeah. play Simba? I did play Simba. You did. I played. You did. <laughs> I played that's amazing. He's in Disney. Simba. Oh, you didn't. I did play. Oh, Simba. look, I'm wrong. Oh, see, I'm, I'm definitely did I'm play sorry. Simba. So, so uh, did they hold you up? Did like the guy like hold you like? Oh. That, that was like baby, baby Simba, meaning uh, a plush. Oh, uh, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Did you say he was a plush toy? <laughs> yeah. I mean, at that time, I was like three foot, so. <laughs> and That's just go, oh, yeah, I am like six foot. Here. Yeah, they could pick you up. There you yeah, go. I was. That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> so, like, tell me about Rafiki in the show. And it was like, what was that like? Was, what was oh, it like meeting Rafiki? Rafiki was one of my longtime friends from church, actually. And she was just so much fun to work with. She fit the character really well. And she was, she's like three to two years older than me. Yeah. Maybe four. Anywho. <laughs> maybe four. I don't know. <laughs> so maybe 20 years older than that. <laughs> you might want to get that on lockdown before you start dating. Oh, whoa. Just, How old you <laughs> <laughs> That's great. It was, it was funny. But I didn't really... Like, because I was young Simba, I didn't really meet Rafiki too often. But, mm. however, I did watch my dad die. Uh, like, oh, man, Jason, I'm sorry, man. Like, <laughs> sorry, brother. Sorry. Like, yeah, so, <laughs> so so that's a whole discussion we could have about Disney movies. Like, they always kill a parent. Yeah, so. why are they always killing parents? They, they always I, do. I don't know. Killing don't, parents, man. So is, that that I, brings I, us to this movie you're going to be in. These writers might have, might have had a bad childhood. I don't know. <laughs> exactly. Let's just kill it, off all right. the dads. <laughs> it, it, as an actor, I could. It does kind of help if you have had like a traumatic experience like that, and mm. someone writes about it. It is easier to put your heart and soul into that mm. if you've had an experience like that. Mm. Have you have you had have you had a, a bad experience like that, there, Brent? Brady? No, I mean my just, dad's still here. So. That's what I'm, I'm like. Is that your real dad? Like, <laughs> well, we know a guy. Exactly. We know a guy. Exactly. He 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 works out of the Philippines. Yeah. Just oh. saying. We can give you. We can give you that experience if you need that for just for just. I'm saying just for just just for acting. Purposes. Just for act. Yeah, just for to build your craft. I, I, We're here to help. Good, but saying like <laughs> is easier or or harder. Yeah. It can make it harder yeah. when they like that. It can make it easier or harder. Yeah. Yeah. Good point. That's yeah. sometimes too traumatic of a scene and mm. it's really something that hits home that yeah. could be a hard hard thing to, yeah. to do and, and that's no, go oh, ahead, no you oh okay well um there uh if there's like a really traumatic scene sometimes they'll send that to you through mm. audition mm. or if it's like a big company like you know the tv show kenobi well that's not out yet well oh spoiler uh, I Ooh, know for spoiler. never mind. I not supposed to talk <laughs> All the Star Wars nerds know it's coming. So <laughs> yeah, yeah, me. <laughs> and I don't think we'd be talking about stuff True. But, about a show that isn't out yet. But <laughs> get an audition for it. Yes, you did. Oh, but can you proxy? Can, can, yeah, can you can confirm nor deny that you may have gotten the spot or? <laughs> We but, can't um, say anything well, about I, it. I was, okay, well, I think it's a yes. Sometimes <laughs> they'll send you like a proxy audition of a yeah. really head scene to make sure that you can handle some 
traumatic yeah. scene like that and put your heart and soul into it. Right. Now, see, you just seized on a great dating idea, right? <laughs> if we could send proxy scenes, right? You know, like <laughs> like to our potential mates. Man, look, like, how are you going to handle this? This is this my happens? mom. How, can can you handle her? And <laughs> this is the average conversation. How would you yeah. handle it? How would you handle or this at least I, I call them proxy auditions yeah. but well no that's a good term yeah. i like that term i feel like that's a good term yeah oh um so you're talking about like uh, doing, doing proxies doing proxy uh auditions and stuff like i mean a lot of people like in those emotional um kind of moments and stuff like that it seems to be a lot of people getting like do acting as a way of therapy almost actually almost to like work through that trauma, work through that sometimes. It seems to be um, sometimes a, a good cathartic way of, of, of dealing with some of those things that have come up. I mean, cathartic. that's a big word. That's the, that's the, the guy it stuff word for the word. day. Cathartic. Is it that like when they like put one in there, up in your heart? That's a Catholic. <laughs> that's a Catholic. That's oh, <laughs> <Just kidding>. oh. <laughs> Sorry. Just jerky. <laughs> so, um, so on that note, on that note, the up, upcoming project that I've, I, th I feel like you should be able to talk about because it's been all over the Facebook, the face um, of looking, yeah. the, <laughs> the book, book of face. <laughs> exactly. That's right. So, uh, Braden will be joining our, our, our good friend, Jessica, uh, and our buddy, George, who this is his movie. Uh, will be joining them in pulled from darkness, uh, which is a very heavy movie. See, um, see, this is where we're going to have some conflict right now. Cause Braden stole my part, man. Braden stole he my part. Did. He stole he my part. And hey man, like I said earlier, it's just business. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but see, that's what that's what Vinny says right before he squeezes the trigger. Exactly. Like I mean, this is this is nothing personal. <laughs> 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 nothing <laughs> personal. <laughs> just business. I auditioned yeah. for one movie. One movie, Braden. One movie. And and you took my part, man. Just like <laughs> <laughs> listen, I can make it up to you. I got <laughs> Connections are <laughs> all right, all right, cool. Like your next movie, I need to be somewhere yeah. in there. <laughs> I, well, we I, absolutely, I mean, we've we've told George he's gonna have to cast us in something. Got to. I don't care if it's I just mean, like two dudes sitting in the background, like in a window, just staring at people, playing whatever. cards, whatever. Yeah. Just, yeah. just staring at you. You know, people. what's really cool is that George is, is really creating a new niche within mm -hmm. the Christian um, film industry with these suspense thriller films. Mm, yeah. I, I've not seen anything out there like this, mm -hmm. and I, 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 it's going to be an uphill battle. But I, I know he can overcome it. Mm. But man, how powerful is this film going to be? It's, oh, yeah. it's an amazing story for sure. Oh yeah, well, it is. It's also going to be hard on the actors' part. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be straining. Well, not not like straining emotionally. But emotionally, yeah, straining. yeah. absolutely. Yeah, yeah. because yeah. It's a true story. Mm -hmm. And if you don't say that right, then people are going to take it the wrong way. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. that's the thing is like, so what, what part did you get cast for there, there Braden? Uh, I got cast for the oldest of the three mm. sons, uh, children. Armin, children. Yeah, because there's two boys and a girl. Two yeah. boys and a girl. And I got cast as Armin. Ah. So, so yeah. how's your Armenian accent coming? How's it coming? Well, it's coming... In, I guess you could say. <laughs> it's coming. Yeah, right. <laughs> he just got cast. Give him a little bit of time. <laughs> yeah. Just had his first dialect training today. That's so. awesome, man. Yeah. Duh. Duh. You're, duh. you're supposed to say, like, the with mm -hmm. your teeth, with your tongue behind your teeth. Uh, mm -hmm. There you go. See? You're supposed to hit your teeth. There you go. Hit your teeth. Hit your teeth. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you're right. supposed to. The, um, roll your R's yep. mm. and W's turn into V so V V mm. all of us V V so there you go man that's awesome look at that so, that's yeah pretty cool look at that Teddy Craft <laughs> nice I put my script and stuff and, and some of you kids are out there playing Minecraft exactly <laughs> so they're learning how to speak oh uh, you uh, just you, oh did game. we burn him did I'm we sorry. hurt him my bad I'm my sorry. bad my bad, Braden. See, look, see, look. You, you, you going, you going. Just, I mean, I was just messing with him. You gonna hurt him? Gonna now him you head. have a traumatic, emotional experience to draw. <laughs> exactly. Right. No, no, it didn't hurt me. I was just saying it's funny. 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. So that is, I mean, that's going to be a really you, a powerful movie. Um, mm, yeah. You know, I, I actually um, I spoke with Jessica when she uh, got that role and told her, you know, my wife and I, like, we're going to be praying for you because that is a legit difficult role. That she, I mean, yeah. all your roles are difficult, but like the part she's playing, you know, that that's such a traumatic ordeal that mm -hmm. character yeah. went through that. So it, it's, and I already know some of the things she told me, told me and John about, you know, the stress of, of mm -hmm. the of first movie. Yeah. yeah, she did. So, so, yeah. so there's no telling, you know, what, what, what this could produce. And you're, you're so right. It's so cool that, um, and this, other people, this is going to sound crazy, but like, you know, back in the, my youth pastor days, you know, they would always send us youth pastors, these, um, movies to show our youth groups. Right. You know, and, and, you know, everyone always like got saved at the end mm -hmm. and, and, and that's not sadly the way the real world works. Right. And so it's George is kind of like, you know, uh, blazing a trail going, you mm -hmm. know, Stabbing not, a fool at the end, stabbing a fool. That's what he's doing. It. Not always a happy ending. Yeah. You know, I mean, you know, sometimes bad stuff happens and we got to learn how to move forward from that. Yeah. Um, have, you, um, have you seen the casting trailer? Yes, actually. And, 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 um, actually, yeah. Have So <clears throat> you started out when you're five, you, you played Simba, like, you know, then you, you went into, uh, what other movies have you done or shows have you done before getting cast for Pull for Darkness? Well, uh, another show that I did, well, I have two movies that I did before Pulled for, well, I have a couple others, yeah. but the two main shows that I did before Pulled for Darkness is Dinosaur Cove and Miracle on Christmas. Now, why Miracle on Christmas was so important is because it was actually also a Christian film. Actually, most of the films that I've been in are Christian films. Um, Miracle on Christmas was just a, such a fun movie to do. And it actually got me, like, I met James, who, like... James is one of the actors in Miracle on Christmas who is also in... Who is also in Dinosaur Cove. Oh, cool. Right. Okay. So, so what is this dinosaur cove? What is this dinosaur cove you're talking about? Like, what is this? Like, you like Jurassic Park meets meets like you know Dora? Like, what is what 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 is that, man? What is what is what is dinosaur cove? Don't give it away. Yeah, I can yeah, yeah, yeah. You, yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> you say too much, we'll edit it. <laughs> yeah. Dinosaur Cove. I'm just gonna give you a quick like overview. Dinosaur Cove is about this boy who goes mm. to Dinosaur Cove with his father. And to on, his grandpa's place. On vacation. On vacation to his grandpa's place, which is coincidentally in Dinosaur Cove. And um, we also kind of created an urban legend when they were shooting shots because mm -hmm. they put up a Dinosaur Cove like sign mm -hmm. over like a uh, day and yeah. like people were passing by it. And there's a Facebook form that's like only for that town. And everyone was going like, hey, why is the sign changed? <laughs> And then, like, it was only up there for, like, a good 30 minutes is what Daniel said, the producer of <laughs> yeah. Andrew. And he t after they took it down, and people are like, fake news, I just passed it, it's still Harbor <laughs> Bay. So <laughs> we created, like, an urban legend. There you go. They're trying to change the name of the town. <laughs> hey, I mean, that's really good, like, you know, um, publicity. But other exactly. the gay people, people like, held him with publicity. Hashtagging. 
didn't even yeah. have to pay for that. So, so back <clears throat> to the story about yeah. what it's about. <laughs> um, so, so you're on vacation with your dad. And this boy find, hears this mysterious noise in the woods. And he decides to follow it. And a little bit fast forwarding so I don't spoil some things. Uh, he finds dinosaur eggs. Ooh. And that's all we need to say and about that. <laughs> <laughs> and, let, and, and we'll just say he, he didn't ha- he, he didn't have to eat for days. Exactly. <laughs> and dinosaur eggs were good. <laughs> he kept making this mad yummy omelet joke. <laughs> <laughs> I bet. I bet. Now this is um this is gonna be on Disney, right? Is it? No. Yep. Be on Netflix. This will be on Netflix. Netflix. Okay, Netflix. cool. All right, so my children's can be watching it, and I'd be like, "Yeah, okay, yes. cool, cool." It's family friendly. It is definitely family friendly, but it's cool. an adventure thriller. Cool. Well, Very cool. Oh. Yeah. Really? Okay. Well, yeah. yeah. It has so, some moments. A some lot suspense. Of yeah. So, so you may come up. Your little thumbnail may come up right beside Stranger Things. There you go. Yes. You go. Actually, yeah, I could. Yeah, that'd be amazing. <laughs> we spoke yeah. it right here first. Exactly. <laughs> uh, what date? What's the date? Do you know when that's coming out? Uh, around so, September. Well, okay. no, well, so, well, it's been bumped up to summer. It's okay, been cool. bumped up to cool. 2020. Yeah. Cool. So it's awesome. 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 Awesomeness. Awesome. We'll be looking for that. So I, w- I want to shift gears to dad for a mm, moment. Yeah. All right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you don't get to leave. You don't uh, get to leave, man. You got to stay but, uh, in there, man. Got to stay with so him. What, what is it like? And this is one of the things we had talked about before, uh, you know, just kind of mentioning some things we were going to chat about. You know, what's it like for you as a dad and to, to have, you know, your son coming up in this adding environment? We, we obviously know from, you know, the things we see around us uh, that, you know, that world can be pretty tough in a lot of ways. There's a lot of temptations. There's a lot of exposures. I mean, uh, you know, once you do a Disney movie, you shave your head and, exactly. you know, yeah. do really strange things. Um, so what, what's <laughs> that <laughs> like? <laughs> what's that like for you as a dad to, to you know, got, be guiding him through that? Well, it's definitely a big responsibility, and that was part of the reason why we made him wait so that we could get our ducks in a row because we knew that it wasn't uh, just a you know, casual thing for him. It was definitely a passion, and we saw that early on. But uh, it, it allowed us to uh, look into some things, find individuals within the Hollywood community that we could trust, uh, especially um, his manager. Who um, saved me from that one Germany yeah, thing. Okay, but anyway. <laughs> <laughs> we'll come back and talk about Put a pin in that Yeah, one. we're going to come back to that story. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we should have. Maybe we should like dismiss Dad. Just talk to Braden. I feel exactly. like he was like, telling stuff. He's like, I'm just kidding. Like, I'm no. kidding. Go ahead. I never know what's going to come out of here. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, so we have, we have a team of people that um, surround him that we know that we can trust. Mm. And one of those people that we reached out to was a friend of mine who is an actor in Hollywood. He's been in several different. Um, uh, television shows and, and uh, films. He's uh, been on The Walking Dead. So he he is uh, a very uh, trusted friend of our family. And uh, so he was able to introduce us to his, his manager, uh, who then, of course, you know, he had to stand on his own merit with his own skills and chops, which he's got. And uh, so she recognized that right away. Um, and what we really liked about her was her immediate need to protect him, mm. um, to protect him from a lot of uh, pitfalls that Hollywood does have for young actors. It's so easily easy to get caught up in um, some of those traps. So she's been in the business for uh, 45 years, I think. Wow. Oh, wow. She's been an actress. Uh, She was uh, uh, one of those actors in the 80s uh, on like Falcon Crest and. um, Oh, yeah. Yeah, Fantasy Island. Uh, She was on different. The plane! The plane! She was also the, the lady that beat up John Travolta in Dance Fever. Mm. 
Nice. Uh, remember, he got hit over the head with a chair in a bar, I think. Uh, that was her. Um, so she knows the industry. She yeah. uh, has been around a long time. So that was really important to establish those connections with those people. Uh, we're still learning. We learn every single day. Um, and we'll probably learn every single day that he's in the business. And um, uh, just knowing that we have a team that we can trust makes it uh, a lot better for us as parents. Yeah. And, and like with the shooting and those kind of things and with school and like, how do, how do you keep <clears throat> like, how do you keep faith center to, to that process and, in and, and how you're walking your kid through this and how you're walking through this with your kid. Like, how do you keep faith centered in that, that equation? You know, that's, a, that's a great question. Um, you know, we try to keep uh, a normal schedule as much as possible. He's very involved in his church, in his youth group. We have some great youth pastors in our church that uh, understand uh, what he's going through. Um, and they, they uh, offer a lot of great guidance for him. Um, to stay connected with his friends here is super mm. important yeah. um, so that he does stay grounded. I think if, if he can continue staying grounded in his faith uh, and looking to actors uh, like Kirk Cameron, mm. uh, that, uh, yeah, so uh, yeah. actors that have professed their faith, mm. um, that uh, if he can keep gleaning wisdom from those guys, I think he'll, he'll maintain his walk and uh, mm. he's got a pretty strong faith. I mean, I could uh, let him share his testimony with you. Uh, he's, he's got a call on his life, you know, mm. to, to share the gospel. And I think uh, Hollywood is, is going to be his mission field. Mm. So uh, yeah. it's, uh, it's, it's pretty exciting what God has done and is continuing to do. Yeah. And that's the thing I think <clears throat> we talk about, we talk when, when George is on, like there seems to be, uh, and George seems to be some of a catalyst for it, uh, the shift in uh, some of the Christian um, film making that tr are trying to actually uh, do some really good, uh, solid Christian foundation stuff and in, but packed it in a way that is, is, is not palatable because nothing, Christianity is palatable to a lot of people, but, but the idea of it's a, it's a compelling story and, and it draws people in. And so that's a, that's a really cool way. And, and we're hoping to see more of that happening, you know? And then so that to, yeah. to, to have and the quality, the yeah. quality of production, yeah. you know, it, and, and not to take away from early Christian films that, oh. that were pioneering oh, yeah. the industry. I mean, they really were pioneering and hmm. they did it on a shoestring budget um, literally, but, literally, <laughs> literally, shoestring budget. Now we're starting to see that uh, they're getting a lot more support financially, and they're able to do some of the the same production uh, techniques and and use the same equipment that they're using in Hollywood to to bring the bar up to mm. where it needs to be. And uh, in my estimation, I think that. Uh, as as believers, we should try to even supersede that mm, and, and be the example mm. of what a production should be. You know, if we're it's bringing Christian, our Christian, it ought to be better. Yes. <laughs> it's good old fall well. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> but, you know, there's a lot of truth to that. You know, mm. why not be the example of, of, yeah. of great production? Mm. Yeah, it's good. Yeah, it's good. We're, we're excited to see what happens and how that goes and, and, uh, yeah. and how, uh, you know, Lord willing, Braden breaks out there and, and just, uh, can start a revival in that place. It'd be awesome. Well, oh, uh, while it's not a Christian film, yeah. it is produced by believers. Daniel oh. Knutson is the producer of it. He's a believer. And what he's trying to do is to provide more content that is family friendly, mm -hmm. but is more mainstream. Mm, yeah. So, because uh, there is a lot of content that families cannot watch right now, yeah. mm -hmm. they just can't do that. And his goal is to provide that wonderful, awesome content that you are not ashamed to sit mm. there with your kid and watch. Yeah. 
Yep. Yeah. And Dinosaur Cove. Well, cool. We will definitely be putting that on our to watch list on my Absolutely. Youngins. I got eight of them, so eight of them will be watching. <laughs> you at least got eight fans coming out now, Braden, right? I got eight fans. It's like oh, he's got a whole theater at his house. <laughs> like, like, line up. Yeah. You yeah, you yeah. hit on something that uh is interesting. It comes up time and time again as we talk to people who are are in you know the the public eye in the sense you know, like we talk with Joe Selecki and you know others who are you know out there like that you, you hit on that concept of team you know the importance of having a team around you guys to support you in this and to to you know disciple mentor you know help hold accountable and all those things um, so the, I think that's important and and I, I I'm becoming more and more convinced that. Just guys in general, and John, you tell me if I'm what you think here, man. I think and you wrong. guys tell me too. Well, well, yeah, well, you're a Calvinist, so yeah, exactly. um, I'm just kidding. Y'all think everybody's wrong. Exactly. Um, <laughs> I'm teasing, <laughs> but um, uh, what what you know? I think guys more and more. I think guys need a team around them. Mm-hmm. I think I think they need a team of people to help them be accountable, to help them grow, to help hold them in check. Um, so I think it'd be a good idea for everybody to find their team, like what you guys have done with Braden. Yeah. Thoughts. I agree. I agree. I can. Yeah. And so different facets of that team for him are his youth pastors, his agents, his manager, uh, also his, um, uh, his coaches that he has for acting. Um, and it, it, it goes on and on. Um, you know, his family is part of that team. You know, they're they're upstairs being quiet for us right now so that we can do this interview with you. So they're very much a part of, you know, the sacrifices that that uh, we all have to make um, to, to make this a reality. Mm, that's good. That's good, man. Like family and, and, and team. Well, sorry. Go ahead, Braden. Hit it up, man. I, I, I was just going to say it's uh, my youth pastors are very fun and and they enjoy in learning about my career. And sometimes I'll even play video games with them. <laughs> like, <laughs> Rocket like, League. like Rocket League. Uh, my youth pastor really loves to play video games with all of yeah. at, like one in our youth yeah. group. So what's this Rocket League? What is Rocket League? I, I am old. And you got to be like, hey, this is Rocket League. <laughs> I know like yeah. Crash Bandicoot. Like I, what? <laughs> <laughs> Um, but Rocket League is basically like soccer, but with cars. Ooh. <laughs> like, like imagine getting a golf ball and then getting Hot Wheels that can go the speed of sound. <clears throat> yeah. I must play this game. I must try this. Yes. Game. I must it just sounds like me wheels. driving growing up. <laughs> it's, like, it's, it's like here in Thailand, man. It's like just yeah. oh, free for all. Let's go. It's in an arena too, and he like can go up on the walls a little bit. Yeah, and... you can drive on the walls, and you can like get boosts and stuff that make you go the speed of sound. Yeah, uh, see, that's what that's 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 uh, usually. Never mind, I'm, I'm gonna leave that joke alone. Keep on, keep going. That was just that was a that was a fart <laughs> joke coming. I was like, ah, never mind. Uh, you gotta <laughs> behave, John. Yeah, no, you gotta behave. I told you we've got a minor on. I'm just saying, it's a fart <laughs> joke. Every every kid likes fart jokes. Yeah, I, I have to say this. This is the best John has ever behaved. I'm behaving, man. I'm 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 a sweet guy. I'm a sweet guy. I've heard it all. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what, what what did he say? I broke up. Well, I've heard it all. <laughs> <laughs> That's well, funny. I didn't tell you, I'm out the same person again. There you go. <laughs> So, so we're going to circle back to that pen. Like, so you said your dad saved you from something. Like, what was it? Like, uh, uh, oh, no. My, my <laughs> manager, in my manager uh, there was a Germany project that we were doing. It wasn't that bad. There was just a lot of red flags, and my manager noticed those red flags and said, okay, because there was a previous family that had done that, mm-hmm. and they had went to Germany, but they were stuck in Germany because they didn't pay for the flight back. You know? Wow. What? My manager gave me from possibly yeah. being stuck in Germany. Wow. <laughs> well, yeah. And that's. You, you know, could have met our two listeners. 
Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> like, hey, why is it dark in hell of a look? No, that's, that's Norwegian. That what does that, what does that even stuff? mean? You know, these these producers, they can they can flash a lot of of shiny things in front of you, yeah. and if you don't know better, you know you can really fall for those traps. Yeah. And that was one of them for yeah. sure. That yeah. his manager said, no, 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 no. Yeah. After reviewing the contract and reviewing yeah. all the details, she's like, no, this isn't, this isn't for you. Yeah. And we found out later that, uh, yeah, it wasn't for us. Yeah. It was, uh, <laughs> Being having a lot done, you'd like me. I were, there, were, there a, were, there a, were there a lane and hose involved? <laughs> I mean, yeah. Yeah. Just, yeah. Well, oh, for man. example, um, uh, there was going to be a scene where he was supposed to be uh, attempted to be drowned. And normally with productions like this, when there's something that intense, yeah. you know, there's all kinds of safety precautions that are put into play. Yeah. And none of those safety precautions were followed or <laughs> no stunt double, no stunt double, no, no emergency crew, <laughs> nothing. We're just going to hold like, you under the water. It's okay. It's just, just water. Gonna, <laughs> it's yeah. just such a, we're just going to push your kid under the water and, and hope for the best. And, and so, yeah, <laughs> if he drowns, we paid him well. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> we dedicate film in this name. We make your kid a star. Exactly. <laughs> my kid is drowned. Oh my gosh! And they a... said nine. <laughs> nine, yes, nine. See, nine. see, I got, I got to deal with this. I got to deal with this stuff over here, man. All the time, all the time. Nine, hootie. <laughs> Have you ever seen the book thief or read the book? The Which one? The book thief. The book thief. No, I have the lightning. The lightning thief. No, yes. no, not that. The book thief is uh, takes place in World War Two. And um, uh -huh. th 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 that line is from it. Nine hoodie, nine hoodie. See, nine. you throwing a joke out and I throw a quote out like no, three people in the world have heard. And you'd be like, oh, this, you wonder why we got one listener, man. You wonder why this, uh, you wonder why this, Anthony. You wonder why this it, is, man. It, it, it is one of the most popular, famous, and required reading books for young adults. Well, you there's, there's th one young adult and, and two older adults that have no idea what you're talking about, man. I'm just saying. I'm just saying, Anthony. Well, I don't think that's been on Braden's uh, required list yeah, yet. Yeah, see? Mm. Might, um, mm. I don't know. Is it uh, high know. school age or is it middle school age? I mean, like, it's actually it's middle school age. Oh, okay. Oh, really? So maybe maybe soon. I'm just I'm it, about to go into high school. <laughs> well, he's <laughs> one semester, so. I go. mean, I, I mean, know. I'm just saying. All I'm we're learning about right now is the Civil War. And so. Oh, yeah, that's, that's all anybody wants to exactly. talk about. School, <laughs> love it. <laughs> I like learning about everything. It, it's like five minutes of the year, like on everything else in history, and then like the rest of the year is the Civil well, War. See, hold up, hold up, hold up. Where, where you guys live at, Jason and Braden? Where y'all live at? Uh, Detroit, Michigan. Yeah, see, see, that's the thing. See, Detroit. See, you got Michigan up there. They don't talk about the Civil War. They talk about it a little bit, but see, in the South. Like all the battlefields, like I grew up around all the battlefields. That That's because them people march down here. That's why all the battlefields oh, are here. I'm just saying, man. I'm just saying, man. <laughs> but we had to learn about it like constantly. We just we grew up with it all. Like it was always there. Like we could always go to battlefields from field trips. Yeah. We'd go. It was always learning about it. So I loved. Wow. The time. That's cool though that you got to visit those places because up here, you know, it's too far away for, for and these too guys. Cold. And we we <laughs> lived on them. <laughs> you lived on them. Yeah. yeah. I, mean, I mean, I mean. But yeah. I, I remember there's there's a documentary. If you t if you learn about the Civil War, you need to go watch it, Braden. You, you would love it. It's called uh, it's Ken Burns the Civil War series. The Civil Ken War. Burns. Catchy is, name. It yes, <laughs> very thoughtful name. It, it delivers as advertised. <laughs> it literally is the Civil War. But it's Ken Burns documentary. It is the best documentary ever done on the Civil War. It is amazing. So if you get a chance, if you, if you like documentaries and you're interested in that in school, read that yeah. or watch that one. It is worth it. So yeah, I like sure. Uh, I feel like he's not going to do that. He's not. I don't know. Actually, I have, I, I do watch documentaries on wars and stuff. Yeah, he does. Like, Dude, that's how I know so that right he, there. He that's probably cool. will check it out. Nah, Anthony, if, nah. You go try to dog me. See, uh-uh. Uh, he gonna watch it. Look at him. Mm, <laughs> look at that. He's patronizing you. <laughs> so... <laughs> <laughs> He's an actor. <laughs> what he does. <laughs> so, 
And uh, for, like for real, like so, y'all live in Detroit. Tell yeah. me about that. Yeah, well, y'all, y'all live three people. Other three people live in Detroit, right? Yeah. Like, what's that like? Got ten inches of snow. Oh yeah, we did get ten inches of snow, and it's also that's good. You don't see the trash. (laughs) (laughs) Basically, actually, Michigan is quite beautiful. You know, except for the concrete jungle. Yeah. Uh, You go north, and Mm. it looks just like Oregon. It's just beautiful up there. And uh, you know, it's the if you want to stay in the U.S., it's the closest thing you get to Canada. Yeah. See, yeah. uh, ask, 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 love, love. that's good because I don't like Canada. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, I'm just kidding. kidding. He likes Canada. I'm there's there's really a like lot it. of wildlife. There's bear and moose yeah. and elk all, all up in the uh, Upper Peninsula and, and see, wolverines. And why? What? See the Upper wolverines. Peninsula. See y'all mess me up with the Upper Peninsula stuff. I have a lot of friends from Michigan that here on the field with me, and uh, they're like, "Oh, we go to the UP." I'm like, "What is the UP?" And they go. Upper- the upper peninsula. I'm like, what do you mean upper peninsula? Like y'all are mitten. Let's know where's. And they're like, no, this other little part here. I'm like, that's part of Michigan. <laughs> There's the airplane. <laughs> There's the airplane. <laughs> yeah, I never so knew it. Got, flies over. So yeah. basically, got you've got the mitten, and then you got the shark. So the shark. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah. Well, the dee, upper dee, peninsula dee, dee. is technically a. It, well, it is a well, part of. And Michigan. a lot of yeah. a lot of uh, national. Um, like newscasters miss that too. They don't even include the Upper Peninsula. They think it's Canada. <laughs> yeah, they do. Yeah. They really do. And it's like, no, that's Michigan. Canada actually comes down. In here. fact, it takes to go from Detroit to. I, I feel like he's Al- flashing gang signs at us. That's what that felt like. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to go from Detroit all the way up to um, Iron Mountain up in the uh, upper part near Peninsula. Lake Superior, yeah. it takes 12 hours. Woo! So it's a long way wow. up there. Wow. That is long. Man, so that's crazy. I, I hear that Lake Superior never gives up her dead. <laughs> <laughs> Lake yeah. Gitchigumi. You know, Superior, she thinks she's Gordon Superior. Lightfoot. Like, but you know, Lake Michigan's where it's at. <laughs> <laughs> no, but Lake Michigan, Lake Superior is the largest. That's true. Yeah. But I just like Lake Michigan. There you go. <laughs> that's his name Michigan. You know, it's cool. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, and that's what recorded some of Dinosaur Cove was on Lake Michigan. Oh, because okay. it looked like Oregon. Ah, and there you go. Very cool. House looked like it was an Oregon beach house. Yeah. Which you'll see. That's that's one of the things that trips me out with like movies. You know, you get they, they really do a great job like, you know, convincing you there's yes. someone or not like like I just recently found out that all the shots in Star Wars are not filmed in space. <laughs> <laughs> they're filmed with a game. They're filmed with a gaming company called Legend. Well, at least the Mandalorian. Is. Yeah. Uh, I have not seen the Mandalorian yet. I have. I gotta watch it. I have not. Seen it yeah. He claims he's a Star Wars fan. I've seen the first no. three episodes. I, last one I saw when he was like kicking Ewok. Mandalorian. What's that now? You can't be a Star Wars fan and not see Mandalorian. I, but see, I way too much. I, I live in I live in the, the middle of nowhere. Like I can't. I don't have Disney Plus. And excuses. Plus. That's all I hear is excuses. I, I barely got there's, Netflix. There's this thing called a satellite. Satellite. <laughs> yeah, but it's, it's it doesn't. I mean, I get Disney Plus here is like expensive. Watch it on your phone, man. If you if you only know Baby Yoda from memes, you are not a true Star Wars fan. When, see, right? no, see, I've watched. I've got to the point where he was kicking Jawas off the little thing. They stole all the stuff. I saw that. That's the last episode I saw. He was booting he was Jawas. Well, the Mandalorian dies after that, so. <laughs> I know way too much about Star Wars. Yeah, I have so does. hours. If you like, even say, he, "Hey, what is this about?" You will open a portal into another dimension. Yeah, he's don't, comic Star Wars. Well, I'm that's how all of them. He's comic book Star Wars. That's how serious he is. Don't don't get don't get Anthony started. He'd be like, "Have you seen the Clone Wars? It's the best thing." And blah blah blah. blah. He yeah. got talking about the Clone Wars. So good though. It's mm. so good. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. So check this out, Braden. Maybe you'll agree with me. I don't know. I feel like if you've not seen the Clone Wars, you can't fully understand the full the full scope of Star Wars at all. Yeah, I mean, it covers about it covers over three years of Star Wars that we haven't seen yet. It shows how count. It shows how Asajj Ventress and everyone 
like how their downfalls are rising up or, and it shows how, what led to this and that and this and that. And it even continues on Maul's story. See, Maul's story. This is, this is my, this is my contention with the whole thing, right? With the whole like other cannons and all this stuff being brought in and all of that. But this is canon. No, what I'm saying is George Lucas didn't write that. George Lucas has nothing to do with it. And he ain't be like, and he ain't checking all the backstories. So I'm like, this is just some some dudes in the closet just writing some stuff out, and they're like, "Oh, this sounds good. Let's do that." And I go, "The Bible has more than one writer, and you don't have a problem with that." Because Jesus wrote it. Because God wrote it. I ain't talking about that. I but that's not divine. <laughs> no, but that's fair enough. Thing. George Lucas, when he wrote the original trilogy prequels and all of Star Wars, he opened these holes or these places where people could go and write with his permission to open up a whole new world of Star Wars that we never thought would happen. And Clone Wars is even written by Dave Filoni and George Lucas. I'm just I saying, mean, like, though. It- yes. I'm just saying, I'm just saying, I'm just, all I'm saying is the holes is called George Lucas is old and decrepit and is like probably <laughs> somewhat senile. And he's like, oh, I didn't notice this big gap that Luke and Leo were brothers and sisters. And then he's like, oh, let me write that in the last movie. You know, was like, that? <laughs> that was a gap. That was a huge gap. Like, you that was filled the- in the prequels, though. But you know what I'm saying? You fill it in. Like, you watch the original ones, right? And, and your dad can back yeah. me up on this. When, when you realize, oh, Luke and Leia are brothers and sisters. And they made out. Exactly. You're like. George, George, you had no idea what you were doing in the first film, in the second film. You had no idea, and so how you gonna like? So that's what I was. I, that, well, I was then I guess Wars. if you if you look at it that way, then the last trilogy just stayed very true to George Lucas because yeah. they had no idea what they were doing either. Exactly. Yeah, just be like, ah, let's throw this in there and see what sticks. Anyway, yeah, I love I love Mr. Star. What I, I love, I, what what I love is in the very last one, um, it looked like. Um, uh, Kylo Ren's ship was decorated by Kia. <laughs> yeah, that's good. Y- y- y'all see what I got? Y'all see what I got to deal with? You see what I got to deal with? Jason Brady, I got to deal with this it, every time. Anybody who sees, has seen it knows what I'm talking about. All that white, all that slick white, man. I mean, it's it's like, yeah, yeah it was decorated. They like, just went straight to Ikea for that stuff. Well, it looks nice, though. <laughs> it does. That's nice stuff. That's good. I can't say it, it does. does. It does. I had fashion. <laughs> <laughs> my favorite my favorite i like like the, what cracks me up about the star wars universe is how malleable morality is okay <laughs> let's look at anakin for a moment mm-hmm. i know that you slaughtered innocent children <laughs> all right mm-hmm. i know that you're responsible for you know the the death of of really the death of of your your wife and i know that but dad i just you know i want to forgive you Mm. <laughs> no. see, see, did 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 Luke know all that though? That's the question. Did Luke know all that? I don't know. Man, he didn't know well, his dad like I, wiped out a bunch of children. But uh, Ray sure know that Kylo was like blowing up whole planets. Yeah, that's true. I mean, he did blow a whole planet. And she was like, "I just want to kiss his skinny little lip." <laughs> <laughs> anyway, who Lord? Uh, all right, we digressed on that one. <laughs> <laughs> we went down a whole rabbit hole. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> we, if, I told you, it's just some dudes talking. Anything yeah. could happen. Oh, um, hey, this what you got to do is you got to drop all kinds of Star Wars things in here, mm-hmm. and and then like like you know what I'm saying like some of the Star Wars nerds will find guy stuff on the internet. Maybe yeah. um, algorithm it up, man. Algorithm it up. And yeah. so um, we should also could be sued by Lucas Films, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh no. Yeah. So I, the thing. Well, so sued you, by really exactly Disney. Do. No, yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's, that's, I was coming back to that. See, you, you 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 jumped, you got me on that one. I was gonna come back to it, and you're like, no, can't talk about it. Like, dang it. No, we can't. Yeah, we can't talk. About we it. didn't even know um, it was that pro- particular project because a lot of times when proxy. they send auditions, they're proxy auditions. They're just d- dummy sides that mm. uh, are just there to see your range of acting. It's yeah. not about what the project is at all. Cause that's all top secret stuff. Yeah. They don't want that script out there at all. Yeah. Um, it, you probably heard about the one script that got out. It was a production script and it yeah uh, on eBay for a million dollars. Fortunately to get it back, but 
yeah, that stuff is that stuff is super top secret. So, yeah, we have to be careful when when we talk about stuff like that. But you know, he was being considered, and and it was it was quite an honor. Uh, oh yeah, he, he got quite far. That's and, awesome. Uh, yeah, and so they got their eye on him, yeah. and he's done a lot of Disney auditions and uh, also uh, uh, Pixar and Nickelodeon, DreamWorks cool. and DreamWorks. Um, so. You know, he's 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 right there. He's yeah. like, you know, he's had several producer sessions. Um, so, you know, we're just praying that the Lord continues to direct his path, mm. guide him to where <laughs> he wants him to go. Mm. Um, you know, all that stuff is great. But if, if the Lord isn't in it, we don't want yeah. any part of it. Yeah. You know? Well, then there's a myth and legend. Oh yeah, Which we didn't I'm, talk about that one. I'm yet. very excited about well, that. Well, myth and legend. Love it. Well, yeah. uh, <laughs> it's a, so myth of legend is about Billy the Kid's story. It's about oh. when he got into a bad group, his bad crowd, and so his backstory. His backstory all the way up until his supposed death. Mm. And well, we don't know if it was. Yeah, because you know he didn't really die. That Joker didn't die. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It was never truly reported because then the, someone can't pl- claim Billy's game. Anywho, I'm going down a whole rabbit hole. Um, <laughs> no, I'm with you. Somebody should check that out. Yeah, we should. Yeah. I'm going to put it out there. And in that um, story, I play Billy's, like one of Billy the Kid's, like posse members. Uh, his friend. His friend in yeah. his posse. And. Uh, Did you care a gun? Did they give you a gun? It hasn't filmed yet. Hasn't uh-huh. filmed yet. Oh, so there we they, go. New Mexico is where we're filming. Uh. Supposedly, in like the middle of the desert or something, they're building like this old town from the ground up. See, oh. that's why that's one of the reasons I would love to get in acting just just to go on the sets. Just to, like I don't even necessarily want to act. I want to hang out on the sets and just to see. I think like, they call get, that a groupie. I mean, hush, I yeah. ain't asking <laughs> Ain't nobody asking nothing, man. I'm just saying, like, just to be able to be transported. <laughs> Yeah, I mean that, that's actually working. I don't want to actually work. I want to actually like have fun. <laughs> like, <laughs> you should be an agent. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Although his agents work very hard for him. Yeah. yeah. I, I wouldn't be one of those guys. I'd be like, let's <laughs> let me get on the set and hang out. Um, you could be security. There you go. Yeah. Just they're... Stand around and make love. Get you one but, of them little sh- shirts. And... Yeah, you have security on it. <laughs> right. Be, be the guy that gets beat up by Brad Pitt on Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. It's fine. Um, yeah. Anyway. Um, the um, this would be transported back to those to the to just that time period that's set to be put in that mindset that'd be just so cool. That to me would be and, and this the 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 area this you know the location shooting that you get to do would be yeah amazing. just like you know he has to do some, uh, horse he has to get some training on horseback cool and cool also oh. some pistol training so let me let me tell you a little trick on on uh, on horses they get to acting crazy you grab them by the ear and bite it. They'll stop. They'll stop acting crazy. <laughs> Not sure about that one, but that is... I think one of my favorite parts is going to be that the fact they said that we will most likely let you stay in complete costume in and enjoy what it was in back character. then in yeah. character and staying. Oh, that's awesome! Just See, the way now? it was there at nighttime. There's going to be like banjos, maybe or harmonica, maybe I don't know, yes. but like campfire. We're just gonna be having a grand old time. See, that's what I'm I jealous have. now. I am jealous, man. I'm gonna hang out and be a cowboy for a, you know three weeks, four yeah! weeks. <laughs> there you go. That was pretty good, you, actually. Get yeehaw going. Got your yeehaw. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all gonna rob a train in this movie? Hmm? Y'all gonna rob a train? Actually, we don't have the script yet, so we, we don't know. We don't know, but I think at least I know I might rob a laundry store yeah the chinese okay. there you go that seems very racist <laughs> <laughs> it's oh man that's, that's, that's the thing is like to be able to be, to be you know like transported back in the time and actually be to you stay in costumes you stay in character that'd be freaking awesome man so like goes back to, to to talk to some actors and stuff on here before like what is your what is your style of, of acting do you like method acting do you like staying in character the whole time or do you like to just kind of free flow with like what what is your kind of your method of acting well sometimes there'll be a time where i can't, i have like 
I don't know if you know this, Dad, but I sometimes need to have a minute before I can get out of the character. Mm -hmm. Because you completely, when you become the character, you are that character. Mm -hmm. And every it kind of feels like every bit of personality changes about you. And why I really enjoyed... Um, Which you're touching on method acting. Method acting, yeah, yeah. like method acting. Yeah. And um, <clears throat> the Joker, mm. when, he, when he was... The, when he got into the character of the Joker, he said, hey, can I leave set for a second? He came back and he was the Joker. Mm -hmm. And at least that's what I've been told from yeah. set. Well, from people who were yeah. on that set. And I, I, I heard one person say that um, they never met Heath Ledger. They were on the film. They said, I've never met Heath Ledger. I've only met the Joker. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's crazy. It's, it? Yeah. It, wasn't it Jack Nichols? Nickel Nicholson that said that um, he had warned him that he was going too deep. Really? That he needed to pull back out of it a little bit. Because he was concerned about him. Sometimes, yes, sometimes you can go too deep and you might, you know, if you go too deep, you might lose yourself maybe. Yeah. Like how, because if, if you lose yourself, that's going to be hard to get back. Yeah, and that's yes. the thing. I think that's part of it. Like as you said, is you see, well, I see a lot of actors kind of go off the deep end. Is maybe they stay in character too long, or that, or that the pieces of the each character kind of gets imprinted into their into their soul, you know, kind of thing. Um, you you look at like Johnny Depp was just he's a great actor, but has went off you know the rails because he's just I think he's just been so much into characters that that's kind of become his personality. And the same thing we see, cause we do, we work with uh, human trafficking rescue teams and stuff like that all over the world and everything. And, and that's one of the things people go undercover. If you stay undercover too long, you adapt that you actually become that persona. And so mm -hmm. that's something we, you know, a lot of, a lot of agents have to talk about and, and deal with is all right, keeping that, that life separate. Like you have to like know, where one ends and one begins kind of thing. So it's, it's very interesting. Like, I, that's where I think you're, you're where you're grounded in your faith. Mm. That nice. can keep you from going off the deep end. Mm. If you're, if you come off set and you're reading the word yeah, and you're diving into what the Lord has to pour into you, mm -hmm. then that can reset you. You yeah. know, the power of the Holy spirit is going to be a, a very good reset yeah. for a, uh, for an actor in that situation. Yeah. But, so, and that's why, that's why I pray for him, mm -hmm. you know, to that grounding. Definitely. Never underestimate the power of emotions mm -hmm. is what, one of the things that I have learned because emotions are a very strong thing. Mm -hmm. When you, for, when you become one of those characters, you can really, kind of feel and almost empathize with them because mm. you know when you become that character you essentially become that character and you mm. kind of take on their backstory and the emotions kind of you, flood can, you, you all put out. their skin don't you yeah their shoes mm. yeah 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 that's that, that's that's one thing too i think <clears throat> you know <laughs> with having some with being empathetic and being able to actually, you know, feel what else somebody else is feeling and trying to, you know, get, that's like, that's a good thing. It's just in, just in life in general to try to put yourself in somebody else's shoes and go, okay, how, how are they feeling and, and being empathetic and, and which, you know, was, is a way we can actually, you know, help people, reach people, talk to people, engage with people for the gospel. You know, if I can, you know, I don't have to go to their level in a sense of, of despair or whatever. But if you can empathize with it and go, man, I'm, I've been there, I know. And, it, and that informs your prayer life that informs your, your evangelism that informs your, 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 your interactions with these people, um, with people that God puts in your path. I think it's a, that's a wonderful thing. And I think, you know, acting maybe helping you cultivate that enough to, to even, you know, as you, as you are trying to evangelize and as you are trying to, to, to share the gospel with whoever God puts in your path. And I think that's a, that'd be a good tool um, that God's going to be cultivating you, brother. Amen. Amen. And um, on another note, it also does help you read social cues better. Mm. So uh, 
One time I was. We can learn from that, couldn't we? <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I, I don't read it, Tosh. I just, I, I'm just, <laughs> I just, I just throw it to hip, shoot from the hip. <laughs> Billy kid, baby, Billy kid. Da, 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 da. <laughs> <laughs> We're sorry, Brayden, you were saying. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, but uh, so uh, on a call with my friends one time, I noticed a social cue because I like when, dur- when I was a character, I had noticed that when that character got upset, he was quiet. Mm. He was quiet. And then I was on a call with a friend and he got like my friends kept cutting him off and everything and like saying, hey, and just all that stuff. And he's like, okay, I'll stop talking. Yeah. And he was quiet for about 30 minutes. Mm, wow. picked, well, I picked mm. up on that and I tried to get him to back, back into engaging with it again, yeah. but yeah. Uh, he did eventually engage back with it again, but That's I good. could That's good. know that yeah. I know that he wasn't too happy. Yeah. yeah. Sure. Being, able, being able to empathize and see and, and put yourself in, in those things or, and, and learning, like I said, social cues and learning, um, you know, facial expression. Like, you know, that's, that's a lot of next time we talk about what, uh, communication is only what 10% actual verbal. The rest is, 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 uh, physical. yeah. Yeah. And so fascinating. Yeah. So anyway, yeah. it's good. Like, it's a lot of good that's things. Cool, learning there. I, I do have you one are. question there for you, Jason, there before you go. Uh, before yeah. we start landing the plane a little bit, so like my kids, my my, my daughter um, loves acting. Like she wants to act, she wants to do other stuff. And you know we're in Thailand, so there's like I got on some some um, actor boards or whatever. A lot of scumminess on there. A lot, <laughs> a lot of scumminess. Um, yeah. Like yeah, so, that's... how do you like how do you get a kid? If say uh, people like listeners out there that have a kid that is very interested in it, or even themselves are interested in it. How yeah. how would you say go about doing that uh, a safe way uh, a a uh, a good way? Yeah. So one of the one of the positive things to come out of COVID is Zoom sessions, mm. and you can Zoom now any acting coach uh, that's out there in in California, um, and that's what I would say is to get connected. Uh, with classes, acting classes online with an actual coach um, so that you can learn. When, whenever he is not on set, he's either acting or, aud- or he's in class or he's auditioning. Yeah. Um, and that's super important, especially for beginner actors that they get the training that they need right away. I mean, they all think that they can act, right? but they need those tools. They need the training to do what they're supposed to do. Um, so my first inclination for anybody that comes up to me and asks me how, what should we start off with is, is the training. Hmm. And uh, like I said, any coach that if you Google um, youth acting coaches in, in California, then they'll pop up and uh, you can check them out first, obviously vet them vet everybody that you're getting involved with of course uh but that that would be the first step local theater will be this next step if you've got a local um theater group with i know in thailand i'm not very familiar with with that culture (laughs) so i don't know if they have local plays or not but not really not really (laughs) you can start one john no i'm good I'm but not. they could certainly they could certainly get involved with some Zoom classes and meet some other kids, uh, and they do interactive Zoom classes. Uh, they'll act out a scene uh, together as a group, so that would be great for them to That's pretty be cool. a part. Oh, and uh, just another thing to add: there are seasons of acting that come in the spring and fall. Now he's talking industry. Yeah. Now I'm talking industry. There are <clears throat> yeah where you'll get a ton of auditions there's pilot seasons and mm. there's your film seasons commercial seasons I well think. no there's pilot season pilot season and feature film season well feature film season is all year long ah oh, that's true right so <laughs> there's pilot season i guess yeah there's pilot season, and then there's episodic season which is uh television episodes that launch off of pilots um 
So you have pilot season, which is in the first of the year up until about June. Uh, and then beginning in August, September, you have episodic season where those shows are trying to fill out the entire season with actors. Uh, but all year round are films. Um, yeah, yeah, but those are most of the time when you burn out. <laughs> <Yeah. little bit. laughs> talking, what he's talking about is during those times of pilot season and episodic season, we're getting hit with you know, three to four auditions a week, maybe even mm. five to six a wow. week. And you're having to turn these auditions over in 24 to 48 hours. Uh. And they're, <laughs> they're, they're all memorized, of course. Yeah. Wow, and that's incredible. They're dramatically different characters, mm. you know, from one project to the next. Um, so yeah, there is definitely a, a burnout season when when all of that happens yeah. and then that's on top of uh all the feature films and yeah. school commercials mm -hmm. commercials are kind of like the the bread and butter of the industry because when you're not on a big feature film yeah uh, every working actor is going to be trying to secure a commercial mm -hmm. uh of some sort because uh, they you know they pay the bills mm -hmm. uh in between feature films so yeah, we've learned a lot, you know, in the three years wow. that he's been part of this. It's mm. been a, a big learning experience. Mm. And when you stop learning is when something's up. <laughs> yeah, you yeah. never want to stop learning. And that's for sure. Also, if you need to take a break, take maybe a week, maybe, maybe even shorter, because you don't want to take a month, because that's when you kind of get out of the director's minds well i would you, imagine you get out of everything mm -hmm. and yeah. you're just kind of yeah you lose your momentum is what yeah. you're trying to yeah, yeah. i understand and, that and that's all good advice just in life yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. you know yeah. so i mean if, go ahead Brad. oh and just i mean like this is a little bit of life advice because you know um acting well just for me personally when i'm balancing acting school and just trying to have some free time in church and stuff. I want to change up my daily routine, maybe try something new. So that way it's not the same old grind yeah. every single day. Right. So that way Keep you don't fresh. go like, uh, it's this. Again. So you like switch from cherry pop tarts to s'mores. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Cinnamon pop tarts, cherry pop tarts. Oh. Uh, cherry. <laughs> I, mean, I ain't had a pop tart in probably twelve years. I need to get. I want some. Send me some pop tarts, Anthony. I, what, what kind of friend are you? You ain't sent me a pop tart in. They eat years. them at customs. Yeah, <laughs> you sound like you need a care package. Oh man, I need some care packages, man. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> it's stupid so, COVID, man. We can't get back nowhere. Nobody can come in. So we. Like, yeah, he's got. Yeah, it's it's kind of tough, man. probably to get. Oh, stuff. So you're, you're stuck there. Yeah, yeah, we're here, man. We can't, we can't leave, and I mean, we could leave, we can't come back, couldn't come back. Yeah, and so yeah, you can leave. Uh, it's like yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. it's the opposite of Hotel California. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Hey. Welcome to the hot pest cat. <laughs> <laughs> Except it. this one's like he sings, he dances, he acts. He's <laughs> oh, my. some good things about auditions, though. It's kind of like training. Mm. for when you hit the set and then even when you hit the set it's more and more yeah. training yeah and you learn everything you learn more things and what helped me learn how to memorize so quickly was uh a charlie and the chocolate factory oh musical that we got oh my really? goodness so what? i had to learn like third of the charlie and the chocolate factory like musical script for broadway it which was, is it was 24 pages of script. script and then we had well that's most of the movie well yeah. not most yeah. a third it's, of the movie. it's a third of the yeah. movie and you had i had to perfectly learn how to sing three songs yeah. <laughs> 48 awesome. hours 48 wow. hours wow that was Ooh. that was insane. We stayed up till three a.m. like five times. <laughs> so I don't. So I don't think those of us. I mean, like John, I don't know. Are you sure you want to act, man? This sounds hard. I don't. Yeah. I don't think those of us who who you, like don't do this. You know, you know a yeah. lot of people Casual. don't really see a lot of the behind the scenes yeah. work that, especially Brayden has done. He has worked. I'm so proud of him because he, the amount of work in the last three years that he has put in. 
uh, it would blow your mind. It mm -hmm. really would. And the, the dedication that he has had towards this career uh, has just been phenomenal. Um, so, you know, it, it, he will put in uh, 12 hour days mm, wow. easily uh, doing acting on top of school. Mm. Um, he's made a lot of sacrifices uh, going where, to hangouts where he yeah. hasn't been to hang out with his friends. Where Even he's, one of the last hangouts before they moved. Yeah. His friend moved to a different state and he mm. wasn't able to hang out with them because he had a, a big, huge commitment. Mm. So it, you know, a lot of people think, oh, wow, you're going to be an actor. Wow. Ooh, yeah. ah, you know, but they don't see the grind. Yeah. That yeah. Yeah. Behind. And, um, you know, the payoff is being on the screen, but, you know, the sacrifice and the work behind that payoff is substantial. And mm. don't, mm. the moment you quit, you'll regret <clears throat> it. Well, see, that's the thing I was going to, I was going to bring up too, is like, it seems that from from actors I've, I've talked to and listened to and those kind of things, like you have to, you have to learn to be okay with rejection. Like your rejection is like your <laughs> is your set mode. Uh, you know, if you're not, uh, then I not, got that nailed in middle school. Oh yeah, exactly, man. I mean, like us ugly guys. You know, we got to deal with that all the time. But the 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 um this idea of, of that's your default mode is like being in rejection and being okay with that going okay just, just keep plugging keep going keep don't give up don't, yeah. give, up, don't give up thousands it's, of auditions yeah and could lead to nothing yeah. that lead to, and well not nothing you've well, gotten I mean, feature films and but to a small percentage you know yeah. it, it's roughly one to two percent mm. Out of every like, out of yeah. out of so for every hundred auditions you yeah. might get one job. Wow. Yeah. Even at that, it could you could do maybe two hundred auditions and not get a job. Yeah, yeah. you could turn out with it's like fishing. I mean, yeah. you could go out and and score a ton of fish, but the next yeah. day you go out and nothing. Yep. So, yep, you gotta and, love it. Um, you gotta love yep. it. Yep. And I think. Once you first start, the rejection kind of hits you hard because it's like, yeah. oh, they don't want me. Yeah. But then you, more and more as you mature as well and you realize that it's not about that. It's just about like the hair color or the eyes yeah. or body, yeah. ethnicity. Yeah. Um, it could simply be as different as voice, vocal yeah. cords. Which yeah. is why you kind of want to learn a range <laughs> of vocal cords. Yeah. What that's was all. that? that uh, that's a 13 year old voice. It was, imp it was yeah. impressive. <laughs> that's middle school. Exactly. That's, that's the middle school coming out right there. That's Young good. Pavarotti. <laughs> well, uh, Taekwondo. <laughs> He's, and there, that reminds me of the dream John was telling me about this before the show he had last night. <laughs> My dream. Yeah, so I had a dream last night, right? I have some Speaking of actors, Cobra Kai. <laughs> well, kind of. Sort of. It, it was. I had a dream. It was Jean Claude Van Damme and Chuck Norris fighting on the moon. <laughs> and so that was uh, that was the that was my dream, and it was like a am. yeah, it was interesting. It was very interesting. Wait. So you were watching this or you were involved? He, dr I was he in dreamed it. I was dreaming yeah, it and I was well, like, but I was involved was in it. I was like, oh, cool. I'm like, like over watching, like doing an interview with him or whatever. And they're like fighting and I'm like commentating the fight. And it was, it was interesting. <laughs> well, guys, thank you for <laughs> hanging out with us for real. We, we've been, I've been chatting with Jason for a while about getting you guys on. I thought it'd be really cool for um, our guys out there to meet y'all. And uh, you know we appreciate it. Thank you very much. Some cool stuff, and is, he's got some great stuff coming up, and 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 has done some really cool stuff. And and you know we thought it'd be good for them to hear from you, your perspective as a dad. Yeah. You know because maybe you're a dad out there, and your your son or daughter is not an actor, but they play travel ball, they do dance, they do cheer. You know, uh, there's all these things that we're our 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 kids are involved in. And, you know, it's our jobs to help them navigate all that stuff. Mm -hmm. And yeah. there's some yeah. creepy people up in those places, too. So, oh, yeah. Everywhere so, you go. Yeah. Everywhere you go, there's creepers. Yes. <laughs> that is 
go to well if if you don't mind uh you know shout out for his his social pages we would love yeah, for your absolutely follow yes him. tell, tell uh, us tell us you know um to pray for him you know to surround our family with prayers you know because the enemy is going to be after him oh, if, absolutely. The, if it, you know he knows that you know god has a call in his life so he's now got a target on his chest sure. so we want to make sure that uh He's covered in prayer, so um, he's got a Facebook page. And, what's, your face, and, what's your Facebook page? What's your, what's your Facebook page? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I, I he has know. people for that. Exactly. Yeah, well, <laughs> My people handle that. People, uh, <laughs> but it, it's Braden Eaton official, oh, okay. and the same, same handle for Twitter and for Instagram, as well as TikTok. So, all right, here we go. I have a TikTok. You have a TikTok. Yes. Okay, then. I have a TikTok then. <laughs> Let me see here. Oh, yeah. Right. That's what I was saying. Hey. Well, guys, thank you for being with us. And, guys, uh, thanks for listening. I uh, hope you'll join us again next time. Uh, go out and do something awesome. We'll see All you guys right. again soon. Take Peace. care. Bye. -bye.